Solomon Thomas from Stanford joining us on the program. My guy, Solomon Thomas. So uh, where are we going to go? Who who do you want to draft you on draft night, just so I can buy that jersey uh, ahead of time, uh, Solomon? <laughs> I'm really, I really want to go anywhere. You know, it's a dream come true to be in this process and be where I am. So any team that picks me up, any city, anywhere, you know, I'm going to give them my all, and I'm excited for that. <laughs> all right, give me the interesting questions at the Combine that you got during the interview process. Anything fun? I honestly, I didn't get any fun questions. I was in my interviews are pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just trying to get to know me better, see my football IQ and see my personality. So I really don't have any really cool stories. So I mean, I know everyone said that you got those weird questions, but I wasn't one of them. Did you ask questions in return? Um, not really. I really kind of just asked for advice. Like what, what would you recommend to do after the combine process? Like what to focus on? And so just trying to get some more information from the teams and, what would best prepare me for the future? What did you uh, score on your Wonderlick? I do not know. I did not. We, I don't think we got our scores back, but we did a bunch of practice tests at the facility before we left. Is it a positive thing or a negative thing, you know, playing football at Stanford in the eyes of when you go to the NFL of how they view Stanford? Do, did you feel that there was any bias against that or uh, in favor of that? You know, sometimes you feel like it's in favor, like um, you're going to be a good kid off the field. They don't have to worry about off the field problems. But sometimes it is a, it is a negative thing. thing. Um, people think that people from Stanford, players from Stanford, aren't dedicated to the game as much because they have that second option and that they're not going to die for the game. They're not give it all for the game. And in this case, that's necessarily not true at all. Like, I love football. It's my first option. I'm going to give it everything I have. And uh, it's my love and my passion. And, so sometimes I just had to um, reiterate that to the teams and um, affirm that for them so that they know that that's not me, that I'm not a player who's going to come in and think about my second option. Football's the only thing I'm going to think about, and my, it's going to be my job in my life. How did, you, how did you get to Stanford? So I was the whole recruiting process. was lucky to have a lot of offers out of high school. Um, and uh, I just, like, visited a bunch of schools, um, and I just found – I felt attached to Stanford, just the vibe there, the locker room. I thought the locker room was really special because it wasn't like everybody about themselves. It was about a team collective goal, and I thought that was really special. And I thought there wasn't a better opportunity out there than the school and the football. And Coach Sean and Coach Charlie were amazing. And Coach Hart recruited me, and he was a great recruiter. So I thought it was the best place for me. You majored in com arts? Oh, I majored in communication. Okay. I mean, come on. So did I, Solomon. That, that's, the easy, <laughs> that's the easy way out. Come on. <laughs> Really? What do you want to do with that degree? I mean, there's a lot you can do with it, so that's a, that's a cool thing about it. Like, like I could I could get into a field that you're in right now. That's mm -hmm. that's always an option. But I was uh, I was blessed with some connections in uh, Palo Alto, and um, I was really able to get into some like real estate, and, uh, meet a bunch of venture capitalists, and oh. uh, work um, and see with a bunch of entrepreneurs and startups and how they work and. You know what, uh, that's always a field that I'd love to go back to because I love that area. I love the Silicon Valley, and that's just somewhere that I feel like I could I could thrive in and just try. Uh, we have uh, one of the Danettes here, McLovin, who went to Dartmouth. He likes to point <laughs> that out, that uh, that's an Ivy League school in Stanford's not. Uh -huh. uh, any uh, message you'd like to send to McLovin here? <laughs> well, so I really wanted to go to Dartmouth, but the thing was that they didn't have a good football program and that all the nerds really went to Stanford, so... That's well, how we're called Nerd Nation. So, <laughs> yes, McLovin. We were I, I, 1996 think... Ivy League title winners, Solomon. <laughs> Hello. That's 96. Well, it's been a rough 20 <laughs> years ever since. If we had Solomon, we would have won this year. <laughs> so you wanted to go to Dartmouth? I really did not. But <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was, it was, I, was just, I was just trying to get out of McLovin really quick. Punking. <laughs> Punking you. Who was, who was your uh, favorite team, favorite player growing up? Growing up, um, I loved watching. Growing up, I loved watching Julius Peppers. Um, I thought he was amazing, and um, I loved watching Adam Kinsu after he after uh, um, he got in the league and saw him in college and how the way he dominated. So, just like I just love, and I just like I switch it up all the time. I love watching different players and dominant players and the way that they play. So, you you spent five years in Australia. Yes, sir, I did. Okay, do you, can you bring back the accent? I can't. I really wish I could. See, they, and when I moved to Connecticut afterwards, they said I was speaking wrong and I, I didn't have correct grammar, so they put me in speech class for three years. 
and it broke my mom's heart because I learned how to speak in Australia and I had this really thick accent. And it was, it was honestly very beautiful, and I'm really, really sad that I lost it as well. <laughs> because that's a great accent, and women love that accent, Solomon. That's so, that's so true. <laughs> He's uh, Solomon Thomas of uh, Stanford joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Did you give any thought to not playing in the Sun Bowl, sitting out? I, I did not. I, I was going to play the whole time. Um, I was in a way different situation, and uh, – I just knew that um, it was one of the last opportunities I would have with the team and just give my all and just play my heart out for my brothers next to me. So I, I didn't have any thought of that at all. But when Christian came in and said, hey, I'm not going to play, now he, he says you guys gave him a standing ovation. What what was that moment like when McCaffrey says he's not playing in the Sun Bowl? He just gave us, he just gave us a speech from the heart. He just told us how much he loved us and how much he cared for us. This decision, this decision was not easy for him at all, and – how much he's always going to wish that he did play with us, but he has to make a decision for himself and his family and his future family. So, um, and we respected that. We, we know Christian, we understood everything he gave us. He was the best leader we could ever ask for the best role model in terms of work ethic and the approach of the game. So we always, we always knew how much he cared and how much he loved us. So that wasn't a shock to us. And this is speech, the way he told it to us, like really touched all of our hearts. And so when we heard it, we understood completely. We were there for him, and we, we respected his decision and respected him. Give me a story about McCaffrey I don't know. Um, okay, so after the Rice game, um, we always go in for treatment. We didn't, uh, the day after the game, but this was a uh, this was we had two weeks off after, after this, and so we um, so I go in the I I'm going in early. I want to get a lift in and. Uh, so I think I'm going in early. I think I'm going to go um, get some extra work in. I go in the weight room. Christian's drenched in sweat. He's he's a uh, he's panting. He just got off the bursa climber, which if you don't know what the bursa climber is, it's one of the worst things that you can do. It, it kills you with cardio and it kills your legs. And he just finished a full lift and was on the bursa climber for about I think he said it was in the five minute bursa climber, which is ridiculous. And I was just in. <laughs> And like that was so impressive that I get in there at eight o'clock or something. He's already done with his lift, and so that's just the kind of dedication he had for the game. What did you think of Mitch Trubisky? I thought he was a great quarterback. He was he had a great pocket presence. He was deceitfully fast. He got out of there, and um, so yeah, he he was a great quarterback. But um, it, was, it was really fun to get after him that game. Do you look forward to hitting McCaffrey in the pros? I do, I do. I, I, I love to hit anyone, and uh, <laughs> and it would be it would be good stuff to talk about because you know we're best friends, and it would be it would be good to make some cracks and jokes about that. But uh, I didn't really get to hit him in practice too often because you know we would protect him because who wouldn't? So we uh, so that would be fun to do that in the pros. I got you going to the Colts, Solomon. Is that okay? You can go and uh, you, you, <laughs> you can you know Andrew Luck is your quarterback. So what do you think? I think that's perfect. You know, I, I like their system. I, like, I think I could play outside linebacker in the system or five tech. So, I mean, I, I would love that. And, uh, yeah, uh, there's some standard players on that team, Henry Anderson, uh, Andrew Luck, David Perry. Yeah, there you go. You, you'll, you'll feel right at home. Yeah, I will. Have you met Luck? <clears throat> I have, I have. He comes back all the time. Now, he's, he's, he's nerdy. He's goofy. He is, he is. <laughs> uh, we have somebody who does an impersonation of Andrew Luck. Now, you, you tell me what you think of this. Oh, Solomon Thomas, five technique guy. Oh, high motor, always in there with McCaffrey in the oh, weight room. I love to have him in Indianapolis, Solomon. Good luck to you, go Cardinal. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> That's why we can't get Andrew Luck on the program, because we do our Andrew Luck impersonation. Uh, hey, uh, I loved watching you, and uh, I hope you, you go where you're going to be able to play and uh, get a good team there. But uh, thanks for joining us, and good luck on draft night there, Solomon. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It was an honor. All right, there you go. Solomon Thomas, Com Arts major. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.